hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And I hope you've subscribed as well or I'll be coming to pay you a visit. <laughs> When are you going to do it? Hey? We're not talking questions like what your usual people are asking, like Rob Tebbett or Coogan Cassis. We're talking real boxing questions. So when are you going to come and do it, Eddie? You've got my email. I'm going to send you my new phone number today. Give me a ring, Eddie. Don't you be a bottle job. Hardcore boxing fans out there, how you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. I'm joined today by Tommy Ward, undefeated 29 and 0 super bantamweight from North East. How are you doing, Tommy? Not too bad. Thank yeah. you very much. You. What, are you, what are we on with today? Doing a bit of painting. <laughs> <Pain and decorating. laughs> so we've got world rank number three with WBO, IBF number six, and you're painting at Fan <laughs> <laughs> Hey. Yeah. Hey. No, I just helped up my brothers doing a little bit. Hey. Staying busy with this lockdown. Is this what it's come to, Tommy? <laughs> it's come to <laughs> keep me in mind occupied. <laughs> right, uh, so how how have you been keeping other than that? Are you alright? Yeah, <laughs> things you know, thankfully everyone's all fit and well. So that was the main thing and just um just trying to do me me bit of training, you know, a few runs and that and just getting in the gym and like I said I've been helping out my brothers, maybe they uh, do a bit of painting and decorating so Getting involved with that, just staying busy, staying active. Keep, you just had your birthday. Positive. Just had my birthday. 26, yeah, so you're at peak your powers. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a family man, Tommy? Yes, yes. How many kids you got? I've got three little babies. Yeah. I've got a son who's five, a little girl who's coming three, and a newborn. Brilliant. So That's good. And you obviously you EMTK and you signed with Bob Arum as well, aren't you? Yeah. So it's happy days for you then, isn't it? Things are going well, things are going well. Yeah. But, uh, with the boxing terms, obviously, it's just a shame with their. Uh, Virus, well, yeah. Yeah, with this virus, what happened, you know, it's shut down the full world, but, you know, uh, hopefully it'll go away soon and we can get back to normality. Yeah. And as you, I keep coping with your weight and everything, like, do you put weight on or...? No, no it's, we, are, we always train and we're always doing something, so we always manage our weight. So yeah. things like that there is not really an issue with it, uh, for me, so... Yeah. It's the main thing with me is just make sure when, obviously, when the boxing stops, you're just keeping active and keeping busy, yeah. keeping your mind busy, so... You know, I've been doing that. Uh, best I can with it. Oh, that's brilliant. So let's back up a little bit. So how, how did you first get into boxing then, Tom, Tommy? I started boxing when I was about five. I went down to uh, Burtley Amateur Boxing Club. Where's that? Uh, in, it's in Burtley, like Gateshead Way. Yeah. Um, I met Graham Rutherford, who trains uh, like the McCormack twins now, who's on the GB squad, and yeah. um, Cyrus Patterson, Callum French, and a few good, few good lads still there, all on the GB. The gym's doing doing really, really well. Um, yeah. So I started, uh, started with him, I followed my brother Martin down there and my brother Jimmy, they went down to Burley, we started training and I just come along one day and just fell in love with it. Yeah. Started from there, you know. Doing it ever since? Doing it ever since, 21 yeah. years. So you think I know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can paint as well, I can't you? I can do a bit of painting now and again, yeah, it's not too bad. You like horses and that, because it's yeah, funny I've horses. Yeah, I've got full of them, oh, there's a field <laughs> out of the back full of them. He likes his horses Horse, and stuff. Horse muck everywhere. <laughs> Uh, who do you want to fight next? I know you're going to say you'll fight anybody like most fighters do, but who would you really like to fight next? It's really, for me, I'd like to fight any of the world champions. Yeah. But that um, uh, Navarati, uh, I don't know whether he's moving up or yeah. what, what's he doing at the minute. Um, Ray Vargas and mm. the... Uh, I think he called him MJ. I think he's with Eddie Hearn. He, yeah. he, he 
just be Daniel Roma. Yeah. You know, any of them there would be would be perfect for me because I'll just get the world title shot, but as well as fighting someone who's the best in the world, isn't it? So yeah. it's, it's just like that that would be ideal for me, but I mean things always don't work in ideal world, do they? So you know, we'll have to wait and see how we go really. Mm. You know? Would you step up to Featherweight if an opportunity arose? Yeah. You would, yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. Um if the right fight was there featherweight. I'll be happy to take on any of them as well. It's not a big, not a big jump, is it? No, it's four pounds. Four pounds. It's absolutely nothing for me. I mean, you make a weight anyway. Like some fighters might be comfortable like that. Um, I've no problems making the making the weight. You know, it's it's a hard. Uh, make a weight all the time is hard, but you know, it's just the dedication of, of being a fighter. So four pounds to go up with. People say, oh, will you carry the power? Will you? You know, it's, I don't think it's I don't think it's much. I think some people put that on, don't they? It, it more overnight, don't they? Yeah, I mean, for when when you're fighting, I mean. Superman, when I fight, I'm probably about nine, eight, nine, nine, nine anyway. Yeah. So you know, it's not really, it's not really much of a difference to be fair. Who's the best guy you've sparred in your career? Would you say? Ooh. Biggest puncher you've sparred? Uh, not quite sure, really. I've sparred, I've sparred some good ones. I've sparred Josh Warren, um, Kid Galahad, Scott Quick. Um, I've been up, I've sparred a few of them, but. I don't know, they've all, all posed different testers really, I suppose, yeah. you know. Um, uh, Sam Manuni, yeah. he was a good featherweight, I spied him. Um, so a few couldn't, but I don't know, they all posed different problems. I mean, quick could punch, like, yeah, he could punch, but I mean, they've all, uh, they're all quite tricky. I think at that level, they all, they all punch anyway, to be fair. Yeah. So, you know, but um, it was all good spot, all good spot. Yeah. Who's the most tricky guy that you fought? That I fought. That you fought, you know, as a professional, has been the most tricky. Mm. I don't know. Not really quite sure, really. I don't know. Because you won every one, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, I, I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that one, like. I don't right. know. Where do you see yourself in five years from now when you're 31, Tommy? Oh, 31. Um, well, I'm hoping to win the world titles at two abandonment and featherweight before uh, before I'm 31. Definitely, yeah. hoping to have a couple of world titles under, under my belt. You know, some good fights, and you know, I don't know. By the time I'm 31, I'm, you know, I'll still probably be in my prime to be honest. So yeah. I'll still be fighting and looking for the best fights out there. I suppose. Yeah. Plenty of years left of me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only just starting. Only just starting. <laughs> All right, then, well, listen, thanks for coming on the channel and that. You've been brilliant, mate. Thank you very much. I know you're busy and that, so I'll let you get to your session. Back to me, Peyton. Right, to your Peyton, and you got, you've got a training session in any time, haven't you, now? Yeah, yeah. All right, you take care, mate. Watch it, yeah. All Thank the best. You very Cheers. Much. Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Pork here, the voice of hardcore boxing. <laughs> and we've got a boxer in front of us, I don't even know who it is, dressed in black. I thought you were going to rob me. <laughs> <laughs> we've got the Sandman. I can't remember doing that, innit? The Sandman's here, Lewis Ritz of Newcastle, lad. How are you doing, Lewis? Yeah, I'm good, mate. How are you? Alright, you're looking tanned. I'm looking tanned. Look well, with all the training outside. You've been, You've been on the beach, haven't you? Doing sprints today, aren't you? Ah, uh, yeah, every day. Well, Monday to Friday on that beach, I've found out. Just between the tide and the yard, that man. So it's been nice, you know, a bit, of, a bit different. That's bit brilliant. Of a tan. Good. Uh, what are you doing stopping over here then? Stay here Monday to Friday. And you go back to yes. Newcastle, yeah? Yes. Usually when the fight's on Monday to Saturday. Back home, but yeah. with no fight being on, it's Monday to Friday, so nice. extra day with the family, kind of complain. Yeah, you're, you're dedicated, aren't you? Like, got to be, haven't you? Got to be. Yeah. Uh, let's back up a little bit. Uh, how did you get into boxing? Uh, me, the well, me dad, he's been in boxing all his, all his Davey, life as yeah. well, and yeah, Davy, and he, he had his own gym, and from about seven or eight, was taking us down there and just just click from there. Just yeah. Never, never, never left. And uh, how did your amateur career go? Did you enjoy it? Yeah, in 97, 177. A uh, couple of fights for England, the ABA final and stuff. So, a couple of GB trials, but never really done great. Like, I never went to any international tournaments, nothing. Yeah. But had a good, good You good beat record. Josh Kelly, didn't you, in amateur? Yeah, I just beat Josh Kelly. Uh, Was that points or knockout? Was it points. Points, yeah. Dropped them late, but he was here to slip. He was here to slip, but uh, <laughs> no, so I got, got, a, good, I got a, good, a few good wins. Oh, a few lads, Tom Farrell, him. A few of our good names I've got two of our amateurs, so yeah, I had a good amateur career and just decided to turn pro. Obviously you turned pro and that, how did you turn pro? Were it Jaffa? Well the bridge I turned pro Scotland with Billy Nelson. Yeah, Billy Nelson. Yeah, yeah. with Jaffa. Yeah. Well Billy was my, my manager and my trainer, but then come back home and been been with Jaffa yeah. since. Uh, 
because you went under the radar a bit, didn't you, for a couple of years, and then obviously you, you've 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 iced ten hard, ten hard at last twelve, aren't you? So yeah. all of a sudden you've got this you freakish power, aren't you? It's come from somewhere, hasn't it? No. <laughs> 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 I can't think of a secret to it. No, it's, you know what it is? It's just yeah. I think like the better the fighter is, the better the more that they take yeah. chances themselves, don't they? And give you the opportunity to to stick one on them. So. Uh, yeah, I don't want to say there was like no massive secret behind yeah. the power, it just seem, seems to come in. Because you, you ran through British level at, uh, like an hot knife through butter, didn't you, basically? Ah, to be fair, it just seemed to be touching them and they just seemed to be going over a little bit like, yeah. like <laughs> I didn't know how, because I was killing myself and me at the weight, absolutely. Yeah, but I it, it just yeah. seemed, to be, seemed to be working for when, and uh, you know, then the time sadly got that run ended and we've moved up and mm. I think people don't want to start seeing the good performances again. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you've got record, haven't you? For British quickest to British heart right eight month and nine days, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Somebody I, might correct me if it's been beat, but no, no. no I've been told you've got it record, haven't yeah, you? I've got yeah. the record, and I don't think. Uh, so you ran into the guy you, you prepared for European. You think you might have been rushed a little bit going into that, or mm, I think you might could have stopped at domestic. I level. mean, like maybe I could have done a, a couple of fights where I got the rounds in, where yeah. you knowing that I wasn't going to stop a few kids. But I don't think I was rushed. I think. If I had done I, out of ten things on the list, I was I, I was doing nine them wrong, and he still only beat us by a split. You know, like yeah, so. Yeah. I don't think I was rushing. I think I would I would be like at ten stone if he was to move out. I think I'd be quite comfortably. I mean, mm. seeing that with the first five or six rounds of the first fight till yeah. I cast. Yeah. Beat them, beat them quite comfortably. So. Do, you, do you think that the f fighters nowadays, when they're blowing people away, they just think that they can blow everybody away? It certainly happened with me. Yeah, and you, did you think you were going to blow him away inside Just, six yeah, rounds? You know, Neil wasn't my full trainer, and my dad yeah. wasn't. He was saying massive concerns, and the typical was, I'll just knock him out. You know? yeah. But I believed that was going to didn't happen, and yeah. sadly, didn't get the result we wanted. And yeah. It put us back a little bit, but now we're back where we were yeah. before that fight. Yeah, and obviously, uh, You've, you're not with Matchroom no more, you've moved on to Bob Arum, is that right? I do, I, I just leave that to, like, oh, yeah, yeah. to Neil and all that. Yeah. And, you know, I think we've, been, like, we've had offers from all yeah. sorts while we're in top yeah, line. Yeah. Matchroom, yeah. we're just sort of, I don't deal with any of that. I'm, yeah, I go in the gym and yeah. Neil, Neil tells me what the... Yeah. I mean, I was fighting Vasquez and I wasn't with Matchroom and they put the, mask, the Vasquez yeah. fight on, but I'm in a good position where I sell a load of tickets, you know, I had sold yeah. 2,000 tickets for the Davies fight. Yeah. I had sold 1,500 tickets for the Vasquez fight with about seven or eight weeks to go. Yeah. So, and I needed more tickets, I was desperate for more tickets, so I would have done a couple of thousand for that as well. So, yeah. I'm in a position where, I'm in a good position where I can sell a lot of tickets and they just tell me who I'm fighting and I just agree and we just yeah. go from there. Just go in and do the business. Just go in and try and do the business, aye. Uh, you're ranked, I think I forgot to put it right down here. Yeah. You rank number two, aren't you, by WBA? Well, well, yeah, I was last time I checked, but I haven't, I haven't, uh, yeah. the wheel in the back. <laughs> Putting us off, aren't they? So, yeah. yeah, I was last time I checked, but I'm not one for always looking at the rankings and stuff no. like that. I'm just, like I say, dedicated, just getting the gym. Yeah. Come here and, and just listen to the people around us and they tell us who yeah. I'm fighting and, and when I'm fighting. Who, who would you like next? Uh, you know, people think I'm daft, but he's called us out a few times on the Twitter now that Prograsso for Taylor. You know, I cannot be saying that if the Taylor fight of CM James was going to come off that I would fight him, then yeah. refusing the likes of that. It's a very hard fight, but I think my apprenticeship's over now, 21 fights, and mm. they're the fights I want to be in and I want to test myself, so. Yeah, we'll get when that will that take place then? Sooner the better. Ah, I see that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> soon as, soon, soon as, now. soon as. So. Get paid. But yeah, I will, yeah, you know, it's hard sport. Last time I got yeah. paid was October, do you know what I mean? So yeah. we're halfway into this year now. Mm. So good job, eight months without a fight. Yeah, eight months without a fight. So it's a good job I'm uh, out with my money and save a bit. So, or yeah. I'll be struggling like the rest of them, you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, yeah. So, and well, are you in a good place at the moment then, yeah? I'm in a good place, but I'm in a very good place. I, I'm, I'm happy, I'm, I'm training hard, and I'm just like I say, just waiting for the next one and just yeah. see, you know, see who will get it. Who's the uh, who's hardest punch that you've ever took off? Who's, who's it your hardest? In uh, sparring and in amateurs and in pro? To be fair, in sport, I had a uh, spawn with Sam Maxwell couple of months ago for the Vasquez fight, he can, he can punch. Yeah, Sam Maxwell, yeah. Yeah, he can punch hard, and uh, the lad who Ricky Burns boxed that relic. Oh, 
yeah. He can punch very hard as well. They're yeah. the two biggest punch. But in fights, I've never really been with anyone. That, that's yeah. really bothered, yeah. Bothered. Patera hurts with a body shot, but apart from that, you, you could have hit us to the face all day, would it? Mm. Yeah. Wouldn't have changed much, you know what I mean? So, yeah. <laughs> apart from that, I'm, I'm all right. I've got a half decent channel, so. What would the. You're 26, obviously, Lewis, yes. aren't you? Know, what would you tell the 16 year old Lewis Ritson? You know, looking back, what would you tell him? What would you do anything different? Aye, stay dedicated, run, yeah. run, watch your diet, drink yeah. plenty of water. Something like that I hadn't done at all until I, I joined Neil. Yeah. I'd run, drink and water, I didn't do nothing of the sort. Come here, I'm drinking three or four litres a day, yeah. eating what I want and just living the good life in it. Yeah. Where do you see yourself in five years, Lewis? Hopefully retire with a quick quick kind of view properties, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Look at all dream combo, so yeah. but when they come to them big fights I can't see. Can't yeah. see why not can't happen. Yeah. Well, but I don't want to be fighting until I'm forty. Forty and getting the nose flatter and flatter yeah. and, and things like that, you know, like didn't want to be talking to Lampos when I'm sixty and I like out of it, so yeah. uh, that's a plan, but hopefully hopefully that hopefully it turns out that way. Brilliant. All right, well, listen, thanks for coming out, Chan. You're a gentleman. No, thank you very much. Just take care. Coming, yeah. Cheers, Spot boys. On. No Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? Big Porky, the voice of hardcore boxing. And I'm joined by legendary guru trainer, Fano from the North East. How are you doing, Fano? Or Neil? Good, thanks. You all right, mate? Yeah, good. Thank you for having me to your home today. It's a pleasure. Nice gym you've got. Nice family, nice weather. Happy yeah. days. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, tell me how you got into boxing, Neil, uh, and, and why you're still in it. Obviously, I know you love it, but... I started to box when I was a little kid. 11 year old, I had my first fight. Yeah. And, um, and just really got addicted. And then, um, you know, years ago, my ambition in life was to be a pro boxer. I thought, by the, once you turn pro, you get all the riches and that and I was brought up watching Muhammad Ali yeah. and, um, and then turned professional yeah. and realised that you were a piece of meat in one way yeah. and um, so when I started to, I knew a few kids uh, years ago Michael Hunt and a few kids who um, were thinking about turned professional and me and me pal in the box and Dave Garside uh, set out to help them really more than anything and then just never looked back yeah and uh, when did you get your trainers license Neil 99 so you've had it 21 years you've been yeah. training fighters and yeah. um, how many champions have you had uh, six now um, is that British yeah rather British Commonwealth European or, yeah. you know like titles what I think I've had two fight for a world title uh, Was that Martin Ward? Michael Hunter and Martin Ward. And, yeah. uh, I, I got a loss first off, then next sure. a draw. So oh, we're on Dennis's show, wasn't it? Yeah, and then, uh, well, Dennis uh, Hobson, he doesn't get mentioned a lot, yeah. but he, he got us the world title fight, you yeah. know, which will always be yeah. eternally grateful. And it was the first fight, world title fight in that area, wasn't it? Yeah, As, um, and um, just just a shame it was the fight what never happened really you know it just yeah. started and it was over yeah it was a bad cut wasn't it oh a real bad cut it was well, when it all cut we got cut Stewie no uh, Herb's mine. Man, yeah Mine's but so. it was a uh, it 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 even cut the muscle you know the, oh. in his eye you know just it was a career threatening uh, cut which mm. did come back on time yeah uh, moving on from that, uh, you've ended up training Lewis Ritson and Thomas Ward. How, how did that come about? I got uh, Tommy, he just followed their Martin to the gym when he was 17. Now, uh, Tommy was too young to turn professional, really, but he, uh, he boxed in the Junior European Championships mm. and he won them and he got boxer of the tournament. And, um, and then he got invited down to box. Two of them didn't. Well, Tommy was one of them who didn't, and uh, but the two got one. He'd already beat them, and so he took it there. It was a bit political. Yeah. So he 
he said um, he never boxed for England because of it. So if he was never going to box for England, he didn't see the point in yeah. staying amateur. And he was too young to turn professional, really. But he couldn't talk him out of it. And yeah. uh, so, and, but he's he's been on his apprenticeship and. Uh, past every hurdle and um, with flying colours so hopefully next stage is a world title fight yeah that'd be brilliant that won't it uh, what do you see next for for Lewis Ritson um, we're hoping you know he uh, like he could get uh, he's well rated in, in the world rate so, so, we're, so hoping, we're near WBI yeah we're hoping that we could um Get get a, a fight. Do you know we were supposed to fight uh, Miguel Vasquez, and uh, so that would have proved that he was uh, in that sort of class. And then hopefully get a world title fight in the not too to distant future. But I know that um, all the belts is tied up. But I mm. think you know if uh, if they get unified. Yeah. Then uh, they'll probably all become vacant anyway, you know. Yeah. And uh, so you think just keep mixing in world class, and yeah. uh, and you've got to get your turn. Yeah, he's, he's, they've both done well, aren't they? Tommy Ward, 29 and old Lewis, obviously 20 wins, one defeat, and he's probably learnt a lot from that defeat. Do you think? It was the best thing what happened to him, you know, yeah. because me and his dad was training him and we were sharing him and uh, but i knew his dad was a bit concerned that uh, on the days his dad told him to do things he done them he, you know there's no there's no lad thinks more of the dad than, than um than than lois ritson but you know he uh, he could cut corners and that and um, but he wasn't doing it with me so after the patera defeat me and his dad agreed that he probably Best um, full time uh, down at Hartlepool and away from all the distractions and everything of his hometown. So he uh, he comes here on a Monday and goes home on a Saturday. Yeah. And, um, and all he does is live and breathe boxing, which yeah. you need to at that level. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, from what I've heard, is you've been doing six mile today on beach with weighted vests and yeah. weighted gloves, haven't you? Yeah. He. Um, he lives here Monday to Friday. Yeah. He. Uh, He's he's, um, he's unbelievably uh, fit now, you know, and I think, you know, everybody was of the opinion that, um, you know, he was uh, a four or five round fight. Right, so yeah, I won myself, because <laughs> uh, he was blowing everybody away, wasn't yeah. he, early? And then, but now you see, like, against Robbie Davis, you know, the last round he put in, you know, like, and it's just... Experience now, isn't it? Yeah, it's just, it, it's, you know... He's a great fighter, Robbie Davis, as well, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, you know, he fought out of his skin, you know, just the... Um, and um, it was a, it was a good fight. Mm. As, uh, and I think, you know, in, there was no losers in the fight in one way. I think no. Robbie Davis gained come a lot again. of supporters. They come again, won't he, Robbie Davis? Yeah, yeah, there's no reason why he... Um, they might have a rematch down the line, you never know, do you? Yeah, well, like... We're in the boxing to uh, to win titles, but we're also in for the money. But it's like, you know, it's of course Robbie Davis would love a rematch, but you know, like, how, where would we move forward to a world title fight by boxing Robbie Davis again, unless the money was like a lump better than the last time, you know, so the, you need a, mo a motivation for a fight, you know, and just, the, uh, but um, that's why, like, the rematch, would, like, if I say, if I shout the lowest written out now, he fight Robbie Davis this afternoon, he yeah. fight, fight him in the yard, you know, just he, yeah. uh, he's a genuine, tough Kid. fight uh, man, you know, just there's no, there's no dodging or, um, as I've just been saying to him there, he's, he's iced 10 hard at last 12, hasn't he? Yeah. So he's obviously he's punching hard, isn't he? Yeah. You know, and he's probably punching even harder at 140 now, doesn't he? You know, in the, we were 16, 17 days away from the uh, Vasquez fight, and uh, it, um, and the sparring he'd done, he, he, you know, for that fight, 
as uh, he looked. You know, the belief he got off the Robbie Davis fight, yeah. you know, because he's all he's confident enough, but you know, he, he hadn't proved to himself. It's like, in my eyes, it was the first 12 rounder he'd done. He'd done 12 rounds against Patera, but he'd done the first five or six, and then he hung on for five or six for the last six rounds or so. Yeah. And just, so that's not really, that's just going through the motions, but like, to pace yourself and know and control the action and everything, and so the the experience and the um, the confidence he got from that yeah. since he since he beat Robbie Davis, he's twice as good in the gym now. Yeah. You know, like just and and because like I devised, it's not really a game plan, but you come up with a plan, and like even to the win, to the to the diet, to the win, to going to the venue, everything. Everything went according to plan. So obviously now he hangs on every word I say even more so that you know and so he's grown as a fighter and I know and I could tell in the preparation for the last fight that he got he grew and um, you know so I have high hopes for him. Yeah. Uh, you're obviously you're not with Matt Shun, are you with Bob Arum? How's that junk uh, junk being well, on? We just, um, we just, MTK really. Uh, are, they, are they in charge of yeah, the they, they, um, they pull the strings. You yeah. Know? Well, they, they very big with top rank, so yeah. like they compare everything. But I know it's it's like Eddie Ann was putting the last show on, you know, and uh, and it looked a good show on yeah. paper and everything. You know, there yeah. was some good fights on, and, uh, and uh, the lads was getting. Is that the one that got pulled? Yeah, yeah the getting, virus. Yeah, they were getting paid like as much as we could have expected, yeah. sort of thing. So you know, like mm. we just have to see what goes next. Yeah, you could be on Eddie's show again, then. Yeah, couldn't you? you know, it's it's um, like I, I don't think Eddie ends too bothered who he signs, as in as long as uh, if if they'll, he'll go on his shows, you know. Yeah. What I mean? But it's like I think anybody. Uh, would use Lewis Ritson because of, of his, would, yeah. uh, his crowd pulling power. Yeah. Oh, he sells loads of tickets, didn't he? I mean, he just said he did 2,000 in the last two fights, and, and the, but the Divinas were doing 9, 10, weren't they? Yeah. Full. Uh, That's good, that, isn't it? Yeah, but it's, it's like, he, he seems to have caught the imagination, but it's yeah. like, people go to the show, but even, you know, like, they tell me, uh, because obviously I'm at the venue, but lads tell me, who, who I know, that even the people who aren't there, at the at the venue, at the pubs and things like that, mm. they're, uh, they've got the fight on the telly and they're yeah. packed, you know, just every, everybody. Pubs on like, that. Yeah, all looking to uh, to watch Lois Ritson. Mm. So, Happy fantastic. days. It's happy days, isn't it? So you've yeah. got a thriving gym here now, with Tommy here. Lewis, is there any more you're going to add to it? Not for the minute, you know, just uh, like, there is room for uh, yeah, other fighters, yeah, it's a nice you know, gym. but it, um, they're what they call it, uh, I've never been asked, but I, n I never chase anybody, me, you know, just yeah. whoever comes, comes, you know, just, it's, um, I just enjoy it. Yeah, brilliant. All right then, well listen, thanks for coming on Channel Neil. You've been a good man and thanks for having me up here today. Pleasure. Alright mate, you take care. Thank you.
Second session at day done, yeah? Yeah. Still an off. Still an off. Pet and dagger it. Pet and Have you got a message for Josh Whale, Tommy? If you want it, I'm here. <laughs> I'll tell Josh. <laughs> He'll call you out on that. <laughs> yeah. Right, tell, tell Dennis. Tell, tell Dennis. Yeah. Get the money paid and it's not a problem. Yeah. Alright, I'll tell him.
just had to change my t-shirt all red hot there in Fanar's gym. Uh, I really enjoyed that, uh, getting to spend some time with Lewis Ritson and Tommy Ward. Proper really nice people, proper what we call in South Yorkshire, proper people. Uh, Neil Fanar is one of the best people I've met in boxing. And at best down to earth, wears his art on his sleeve. Kind of trainer and I can see why uh, he's got a, a bond there with his fighters where they respect him and they listen to him and I really enjoyed it and I think days like this today for me and don't forget I'm just starting out doing these short films and stuff. I'm just finding my feet but it's going well. Uh, I think the I can explain it. Days like this renew my passion for boxing because it's a dog business in it. It's a dog, dog. It's a horrible game, isn't it? Horrible, but meeting nice people. Because there's lovely people in boxing, isn't there? And there's there's people that are not so, not so lovely. Uh, and I just think that. It's renewed my passion, should I say, for boxing. So the route is being calculated. Right, I think we'll uh, we'll head on we'll head on to the next Please destination to the now. Highlighted route. So, but uh, I really enjoyed that, and I hope that Lewis Ritson gets his just deserves. Uh, I thought watching him today on body bag and on punch bag and speaking to him. Please turn right. Speaking to him off at, uh, at the end of the road onto. We just turn that off because I think I know what I am now. Uh, speaking to him has renewed my passion for boxing, as I've said. But watching him train, I think he's uh, an hard trainer. I think he listens. Oh, I can punch like a mule. And I watched his style, how he releases his punches. He puts everything into Prepare every punch. Turn right. He puts every everything into every punch. And turn right. Looks like his jabs loads better, and he's coming on fantastic. And the other kids, a lovely kid as well, Tommy Ward, got great footwork, very fast, undefeated, 29 and 0. I'm going to put that uh, message in that he sent to Dennis about fighting Josh Whale because. I signed Josh Whale for Dennis and um, bent over backwards to get him signed. Not literally bent over backwards, I mean I was forced an issue for a couple of weeks. Dennis signed him and Josh has had four fights with his four wins. I'd like to see him fight Tommy Ward but I don't make them decisions. Something I can put to Dennis and Josh Whale's dad Mick Whale and, and Steve Crump and Dennis will talk collectively. Mick Whale will have the biggest say on that. and. People have got to get paid, haven't they? Uh, they've got to. Fighters have got to be paid. And Tommy Ward's saying, "I want paying." Josh is going to have to be paid if Tommy gets paid, and it's a great fight. Could they put it on at North East or Barnsley? I don't know. It's it's up to the powers that be. But Tommy Ward says he'll fight Josh Whale, so that's the cherry on the cake for me today. He'll fight Josh Whale if money's right. Josh Whale will fight anybody if money's right, so so Mick Whale doesn't tell me off for uh, at, for trying to match fighters up. Like I said, it's no to do with me if they fight or not, but forget all that, oh, should they fight and all that, I've gone straight to Tommy Ward. Will you fight Josh Whale? He's gone, yeah, if money's right, that's it. And Mick Whale will probably appreciate that because he doesn't like any of this nonsense in between and tickle tackle. Do you want to fight him? Yeah. Neil Fano trains Tommy Ward. If money's right, Neil will be behind it and, the, and whoever's handling Tommy Ward, is it his people, Dave Garside or whoever, but the money's going to have to be there, isn't it? But it's a good fight, isn't it? If they could get it for a belt or an elim eliminator, why not? But like I said, if they can't get it, they don't have it, do they? It's, it's not uh, it's not going to alter my life. Is it a fight I'd like to see? Yeah, I know both kids, but I know Josh better. Who would I want to win? 
I like to spell tell the truth. Obviously, I'm going to want Josh Whale to win, aren't I? I want both of them to get home. Who do I make a favourite in that fight? <sighs> Putting me on the spot there, aren't I? I'm not going to sit on the fence. I'll flip a coin late and ask about that one. Tommy Ward's a good fighter, isn't he? Josh Whale brings it, doesn't he, at featherweight. Tommy would have to step up to fight Josh at featherweight, so I don't know. It's a good fight, isn't it? Domestic fight, nobody having to fly in from other countries. I'd like to see it. Um, you know, I'd like I'd like to go up and see Neil Neil there, he's got a lovely family, they all made me welcome. Nice family. I want to get a spray tan from now, don't I? Do it a spray tan. But uh, but getting back to Lewis Ritson, I hope that uh, he wins the world title. Is he good enough? Yeah, WBO number two. Tom, uh, WBA number two. Tommy's WBO number three. Right. Uh, so they're highly ranked, aren't they? But I'd like to see Josh Whale fight him, and I'd like to see Lewis Ritson fight Josh Taylor. I never asked him that. But I would like to see him fight Josh Taylor at St James Park on pay per view. Because that's got to be end game for Lewis Ritson, hasn't it? Getting a world title shot at St James Park or uh, winning a world title in Vegas and defending it at St James Park because money is the end result. I think I'm learning that now. I, I wanted to be involved in boxing and not be one of them people that goes on about money. So I never get involved in money. But, I, I, but it's about money, isn't it? And fights don't happen because of money, don't they? They don't happen. They do not happen just... Sorry, fights are not going to happen just because I'm screaming about legacy. They, are, they don't happen because of money and timing and things like that. And I think it's a shame, but I've just said to Fano there, if Newcastle United said they didn't want to play Sunderland in FA Cup or Premier League, eh, we'll not play them this year, we, don't, we, don't, we won't pay an X amount. They'd be hell on, wouldn't they? This is where the government have got to step in and say, right, we need to put all these fighters in like a league or something and make them all fight each other. That's what they need to do. But I don't know. It's one of them things, isn't it? They hit your head against the brick wall week, aren't they? But today has been positive for me and it's restored my faith in boxing. So I'm probably gonna go down to A1 now and get done at doing 100 mile an hour in a 70 and go back into being Mr. Nasty. <laughs> Tell you what, Hartlepool's a beautiful uh, city, isn't it? Town. Some lovely houses, man. It gets a lot of bad press, doesn't it, Hartlepool? Shout out Ray Mondo, taxi driver, pulling Lewis Whitson up while he's doing his jogging at beach. Saying, ah, do you follow my mate Porky? You did that to Savannah, didn't you, you naughty boy? Should hand him a leaflet out, tell him to subscribe, Ray Mondo. So we haven't got many subscribers, have we? <laughs> I'm going right way. Yeah, it's a lovely, lovely town. This, unless there's a rougher part to it, I don't know. This looks nice around here. They speed campus. So that's about it, really. I'm going to take my time with this over a few days and get a proper production on it because. I don't just want to stick it all out, squash together. We are, we are having a bit of a, we are having a bit of a theme to it. I think is that the word we're looking for? <coughs> yeah. So we we'll want to get it looking all right. We want to make it look good, don't we? Aye. We could uh, could make it look a lot better, but I thought it, we went all right. The pretty. Pretty e easy people to talk to about boxing. It's like going to Mick Wales gym. Just so easy. You do some interviews with people, they want to do 20 takes and they want to write scripts out what they want to be talking about and all oh, that didn't sound right and all that. What? What? Do me a favour. But uh, anyway, enjoyed it. So that's about it, so peace out, keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing and uh, share and like this video if you can, leave a comment, not enough people leave a comment, leave a comment and tell me what you think about it, share it with all your pals and let's see if we can get boxing back to where it used to be, alright peace out.
<laughs> you like that one, didn't you? Right, first of all, I just want to say thank you very much for liking and subscribing. It means a lot to me. Because uh, we're on this journey together, aren't we? So, anybody got any ideas for the channel, fire them over to me. PorkyCorner at mail.com. Alright? Shout out to Innovation Alloys and South Yorkshire Packaging. Alright? Don't forget to subscribe, keep on trucking. <laughs>